Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Stephanie Angeles, and I am from the Carreter Brewery Club, as you can see here. And right now, we are interviewing Rafael Tinis. So, Rafael, can you introduce yourself, please, to the audience? Of course. Um, I'm Rafael. I'm the current president of Meguriai Karatakai in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. I've been playing karata since 2015, and my club was established in 2013, so I've been playing like <laughs> for a long time right now. Um, I really love karata and I really love talking about karata. Since last year, I, w I haven't been able to play uh, in person, so I've been playing online and, and, and everything. I really miss playing karata. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and um, how is playing karuta in Brazil? Are there a lot of clubs, local tournaments, maybe? Oh, actually, in Brazil, um, mm -hmm. right now, there's only three clubs. Um, the one I'm part of is the, is the oldest one um, and with the most members. So we mostly do um, tournaments between ourselves among ourselves because okay. mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of members like um in japan you it, it's common to see like tournaments with more than 100 people but it doesn't really happen <laughs> here in my country so most of the times we we're playing with the same people um mm -hmm. we usually we do some gashiku it's kind of a camp we stay like two or three days um with the other members playing and some sometimes during these gashikus we make it like a tournament a team tournament or sometimes a, an individual tournament but it's not really anything official because a, as i said we don't have that many people <laughs> even if you have a lot of people <laughs> well you have more members than in karuta brewery club <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Okay, um, so what about the karate club you're in? You say there's three in Brazil. Oh, of course. Um, there's one in the south of the country. Mm -hmm. um, this one is was established in 2016, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really have a lot of members. And the other one is is a new one. It was established just after, just before the pandemic began so actually they didn't have a lot of opportunities to play together but um, they the, the founder the, the one who established the group used to be a member of our uh, of our club mm -hmm. then she went to she went to Rio de Janeiro and then there she decided to establish her own club, like to promote karata and play karata and gather more people to play it. And well, we're so happy about it. <laughs> okay. And uh, what's the name of your karata club for the Brazilians who are listening? Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, yeah. in, the one in the south is mm -hmm. Mina Nogawa. Mm -hmm. It's the karata club. It, it's the karata club association from Porto Alegre. And the one in Rio de Janeiro, it's called Rio Karata just like the name of the city. Mm -hmm. Okay. And have you been in any tournaments outside Brazil? Uh, I'm sorry? Have you been in any tournaments outside Brazil? Oh, if I've been in any tournaments mm -hmm. outside Brazil? Oh, um, I've been to Japan once to play karate and there I participated in Otsuhi Karukan Cup, the first international karate tournament organized by Otsu. Um, I, represented team I represented Team Brazil there. And the day after the team tournament, this is a team tournament, mm -hmm. um, we, par we participated in an individual tournament in Wakayama as well, in the Wakayama prefecture. And well, <laughs> the results, <laughs> Um, in the team tournament, we we ended in fourth place, 
from 10 participating group, uh, groups mm -hmm. and in on indiv at the individual tournament i lost uh, in the first round uh, i mean i was so sad because um, i was tired of the other day and we had to travel from otsu that it's in chiga prefecture to wakayama and then on the other day at just in the morning you have to play again like after playing five matches on the day before and it was i played really bad so i lost in the first round <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean many members of karate club have gone to japan right arachan in the last interview so did you actually uh went to japan before or just for the first time because of karate um, i since since i was since i was young i was interested mm -hmm. in in japanese culture like anime that's how i sure. i mm -hmm. get i got to know karuta by the way with chihaya furu um but i wasn't really interested in going to japan and in speaking japanese because i was okay with with just oh okay i like japanese culture but i don't really need to speak it i don't really want to go to japan mm -hmm. but in 2018 uh, in 2015 when i started playing karuta i started learning japanese as well because you have to speak you have to know a little hiragana and then from yeah. there you, you start knowing more of of the language even if you don't want to i still don't really know how to speak japanese I only can communicate with like poorly, but <laughs> it, it's better than before. And in 2018, we had this opportunity, like we were invited by by Yotsu City to participate in the tournament. And I was one of the people who could participate. And I decided I would go because I was already that interested in playing karate like in Japan just how they do like in the anime you know and i wanted to know if it was like for real if i wanted to really take it seriously because i've been playing in my country for like three years and then i didn't really know oh okay i have a lot of fun here but i only play with less than 10 people so I don't really know if I'm a good player, if I'm doing things right, if I really like karuta. And then when I went to Japan, I, I could verify all of that. <laughs> and it was an amazing experience. It was the first time I, I went to Japan. So a lot of experiences at the same time. <laughs> so it was really yeah. interesting. Okay. And I can see in your background, Chihaya Furu. So... I can actually do some questions about Chihaya. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, in the other interview, I couldn't because Ara-chan is not a huge fan. Maybe she will, who knows. Uh, <laughs> but let's start with this. Uh, who is your favorite character from Chihaya Furu? Do you have one or a group? Well, when, when I started seeing Chihaya Furu in 2011, mm -hmm. just, when the, when, just when the anime it aired. Air? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really liked Taichi because, you know, it, he's really a character you can relate to in, in the story because you see a lot of his point of view and he kind of suffers a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it's not really suffering, but like love <laughs> suffering and losing a lot of matches. So yeah. we kind of feel like, oh, things shouldn't go like that. He deserves more. And then I really liked him because he's, Even though he doesn't really like karate in the beginning, he's so serious about it. Mm -hmm. Even though he has a lot of other things to do. So I liked Tai Chi a lot. But then I rewatched Chihaya Furu just, just before the, the third season aired, like mm. in 2019. Yeah. And, and it was like a, a really different experience for me because at the, in the first time, I I watched Chihaya Furu and I didn't know what Karuta was. Mm -hmm. And most of my interest was like, oh, uh, it's a group of friends and they're like practicing a, a sport and they're doing it together. And then there's a love triangle that's so nice. 
but in the second time I was more interested in the karuta part than ever, anything else. So I really related to Chihaya because in the beginning of the anime, she goes through a lot of of hard times because she doesn't really have members for their club mm -hmm. and she wants to practice, but it, it is kind of hard to establish a good club so you can participate in tournaments. And it's kind of like that for us who, who, doesn't, who don't live in Japan, right? Um, we have a lot of problems like finding places to practice and then finding people to practice together and then when you start explaining what karate is people are like oh i don't really understand what you're saying oh it sounds so difficult i don't want to play it so i related to chihaya a lot because she was so in love with karate just like mm -hmm. i am and <laughs> that she could do like everything everything she could do to to promote karate and to play more she was doing so I guess right now she's my favorite character because of that, but I'm mostly I watch Hayafuru only for the the Karuta part. I I don't really like the the romance in it, even though the poem references are are great and they do it like mm -hmm. it, it it's well written, it's well made, but I don't really like the romance part because the the, the fandom gets really. <laughs> People discuss a lot, and right now we don't really have an ending yet. So I prefer to just see it for the karate part, and it's amazing. I love Tihaya. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I love Tihaya for as well. But for me, it was different because I wanted uh, to watch another uh, romance anime. <laughs> so I was looking for romance, romance, <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of bored enough. Because it was so classic, the romances. So I pick one and then I, I got bored and said, this is not good, another anime. And that's how I got into Chihaya. And I put it because I wanted to see a romance anime, but a good one. And I saw the main character and say, oh, she's cute. Let's see how it goes. And I watched the first episode. <laughs> and I even was like, like this, watching and it, <laughs> I didn't understand the whole thing, why she was looking at a train, what she was like that, what, who is Taichi. Like, like the first episode didn't tell you much until the end. And I was like that until she met uh, Arata. And when Arata played, <laughs> I think that that's, that's the hook. Uh, I actually wanted a romance anime but it was boring and when i watched this um i played the second episode because of karuta because i saw arata and say that's interesting so i put the second episode and then and then i realized it's a sport and then when i finished the first season i google and i realized it was an actual sport a real sport <laughs> in japan and and that even wanted me to care about the anime even more right and that's how I really think this is a really great anime because it's really about fashion about sport yeah of mm -hmm. course it's it's so interesting that um, Chihaya and and Arata both love Karuta since mm -hmm. the beginning and yeah. we see through the through the story like how Taichi start from oh i don't really like it i just want to play because my friends are playing and then mm -hmm. he goes oh i love this this sport as well but the other two chihaya and arata they love karata but but they love it in, in different ways like for arata it's a memory from his grandpa and it's not just like happy memories because his his grandpa died and mm -hmm. everything yeah. so it, it's it's really nice because for for me my, my experience with karuta is closer to chihaya's because mm -hmm. it's like everything is a, a happy memory even hard situations that there's been some hard situations <laughs> with my karuta club um when we remember them like in the memories we always have fun and we always remember oh but that, that was a good, th there was more good things than bad things when we put it, when we think about it. And for Arata, 
I guess it's the the balance is really well. Like、um, he has a lot of good memories, but also there's a lot of pressure because people see him like a, a small version of his grandpa, and、yeah. it's like it's really it's a lot of、uh, it's a lot to him. So even though he's having fun and he loves Karuta, it's just not happy memories. So it's it's really good to see the sport through these both different views. Even though I like to hire more, <laughs> it, it's really good to see the plot with Arata as well.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're the strongest, Chaya. <laughs> Have you cried like her in a match? <laughs> like <laughs> after a match, <laughs> not right during the match. <laughs> Because of losing or anything like that, <laughs> like have you cried after a match because you lose so badly or anything?、Mm, no,、uh, cried. I I don't think so because <laughs> yeah.、Um, <laughs> I mean the important tournament tournaments we had here、mm -hmm. that I participated, I've won. Or I didn't lose the match because we had individual tournaments.、Um, like we had one individual tournament I participated that、mm -hmm. I won in 2018, and we had a group tournament that my team didn't win, but I won every, every match I I played. I won, so I mean I couldn't cry, right? <laughs> it, it it's like my、yeah. team lost, but. There's nothing I can do. I I, I play my best. I want my matches. I mean, it's sad, but、um, I, I I had to be there for my friends. And but well, I I cried、um, two times. Like, but not not really playing karuta. I've I've played.、Um, how how can I explain?、Um, I make a lot of mistakes while playing karuta. It's called otetsuki. Like. When you you take the wrong card, you have to you receive another card, and it gets harder to play like that. And sometimes when I'm not that focused,、um, I make a lot of mistakes. Like there's one game I've made like ten otetsuki. It's like I've I I gave my opponent half the the card, almost half the cards <laughs> that it was necessary to win. So I was so frustrated with myself when that happened. When that happens, because sometimes it happens, <laughs> not every time.、Mm -hmm. But I don't really cry.、Um, when I cried playing karate was when I was in Japan, and at the opening ceremony of Otsuhi Karuku, when Mutsumi Stone Sun was giving her speech. Like Mutsumi Stone Sun is the ambassador of competitive karate outside Japan, so she represents every karate player. I like outside Japan, and she was one of the organizers、uh, organizers of the tournament,、mm -hmm. and she gave the she gave a speech, and I, I really cried when I heard everything because her her hardships, her heart she she's gone through through a lot of hard times,、mm -hmm. and it's like it's not like me that I've been playing for three years. She was.、Mm -hmm. The same page for more than twenty years, and at the time there wasn't Chihaya Furu. And when when she she always she, she told us, she told us that her dream, like she always told Japanese that one day there would be an international tournament, and that we would be able to gather a lot of international players to play together. And some people didn't believe her, and she was like. Now I can finally breathe because I, I like I, I tell I told everyone that it was possible, and and now we're here we're doing it, and it's like I I we were also from the the farthest country like it's if if you you kind of like Peru is really far from Japan as well but、yeah. if you you see it on a on the globe. It's like it's the the opposite <laughs> in the in the globe, like Brazil and Japan. So it's really far from it, and I almost couldn't believe that I was there. 
and I cried while she was giving her speech. And when we said goodbye at the end of the Wakayama tournament, because at this tournament, we, it was an individual tournament, but we were playing as a, as a, as a club, like the international participants were playing mm -hmm. as a, a, as one club. So we couldn't face each other until the finals, just like in, in the anime. And at the end, um, some of us won, some of us lose. But in the end, we had to say goodbye, and we didn't know when we would be able to see each other again. And even to this day, most of the people I, I haven't seen since that day. And when we had to say goodbye, I cried as well, because I knew that I, I was thinking, oh, I don't know when, when, when I'll see Mutsumi-san or the French players or the Thai players or the Italy players or the Hungary players. And we were so happy to be there, but at the same time, I, I was already m missing that experience. And mm -hmm. that, that, that's the moments, th those are the moments I cried, like, with, with Karata. Not really with playing. For me, mm, playing Karata is it's more of a relaxing experience, because um, a lot of times I feel like I lose to myself. And sometimes you lose to your opponent because the, their skills are are, are, are higher. They, they have like higher skills, higher kind of the skills. But most of the times you can see, oh, I made a lot of mistakes. Even if you didn't make Otetsuki fault, um, you see, oh, I didn't move like I wanted in that card. And mm -hmm. that I feel that kind of, of guilt, but... It doesn't really bother me because I always see like, oh, I'm learning. Um, I tried something new here and it didn't work. So I know something I can do the next time to see if it works. And so it's always, I'm always learning. And most of the times you learn more when you lose than when you win. Because when you win, you're like, oh, thank God I won. <laughs> I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> it's okay. I won my match. But when you lose, you just say, why? Why have I lost? I mean, what was wrong with my game? So I spend more time thinking about it and trying to improve my game than like uh, resenting the game I played. So I'm really not sad with losing. I, I, it's okay losing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now let's move on with Karuta. Um, to just come with Chihaya Furu as well. Do you have any advice that it came from Chihaya Furu when you play Karuta? Like, this is a really good advice from Harada Sensei, so I think that advice will help the audience as well. Something like that. Do you have any tip from Chihaya Furu that you watch that you think is really helpful for Karuta players? Just a second. It's, it's really heavy rain here. I'll close yeah, I everything I can, <laughs> and I'll ask you to to say again. Just a minute. Okay. Now, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, in Peru, it never rains, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, like I was saying, for Karuta, for players, have you watched Shihaya Furu and you thought that's a really good advice for Karuta players? Like tips that from Shihaya Furu? Oh, tips from Shihaya Furu. Um, Shihaya Furu is a really faithful anime mm -hmm. for, for Karate. That's why a lot of people watch the anime or the movies and then, they, oh, I want to play Karate and people <laughs> keep playing it because, I mean, some animes are not very... It's a sports anime, but you don't really like, oh, the experience is not the same. <laughs> I mean, if you <laughs> watch it, um, Kuroko no Basuke, 
is about a basketball <laughs> anime, but it's really not about basketball, right? They have a lot of powers, and you see little <laughs> about the real playing experience. Mm -hmm. um, but Karata is like it's so faithful. Like it's not like watching real Karata. If you watch real Karata, it's really hard to understand what's happening. But yeah. they made mm -hmm. um, Yuki Setsugu Sensei, the author, made it in the story. Um, just like what you experience with playing the game. So, like, the adrenaline is so high that you really see everything in slow motion. Like, something that happens in two seconds, you say, like, oh, my hand went there, and then, like that. And you think about a lot of things in a matter of seconds. And in the anime, it seems like, oh, they're thinking too much. It's happening too many things here for something that's so fast but it, it really happens like that that's why when people oh i want to play it and then they see it, that's just like the anime but without the flowers so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i guess almost anything almost everything in the anime um that they talk about is like a good a, a good advice for someone who's playing karuta but some, but sometimes um, it, it is different because, I mean, for foreign players, the experience of playing karata is a, a little different from playing in Japan. So I guess the, 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 biggest, the, the biggest difference, with, like what you see in the anime and in real life, it will be like that for us. So in the anime, they, they show us a lot of things like then you don't have to be um, all, you can't be like only a fast a fast kar karuta player or you can't just rely on strategies so mm -hmm. i guess they really go through a lot of points that we can use in real karuta even my, me myself and my friends use chihaya furu as source for thinking about strategies um because like suo meijing does a lot of different a lot of different things and and we see like how chihaya is always learning so i i i ju I've just remember here that when she gets to a class in the beginning of the anime mm -hmm. um she goes in, in the first tournament and she realizes like oh i've got i've got here only taking cards faster than my opponent but it's not possible to win just with that anymore because if i just going fast my opponents will use a lot of strategies to counter me because they know my only weapon my only skill is to go faster than them so they can use it against me so th that's what's hard about karata because when it, it, it's more of a uh, a reading thing you have to read your opponent you have to predict your opponent's actions and Chihaya Furu portrays it really well um, with how Chihaya has to even though she's faster and you you may think oh if the game you have to take cards faster if her skill is to take cards faster it's okay she won <laughs> congratulations well she will win if she can take cards faster but there's a lot of problems in in the middle so they really gave a lot of advice so like tsukue kun mm -hmm. he he thinks a lot about strategies and i've heard that before chihaya furu uh, most of the players just play like without strategies at all like just with the feeling and of course they thought about what which cards to send to their opponent and which cards to focus but they were not thinking how to quick on things like oh i'll see how many cards i can take on my right or on my left on, or on my opponent's right and see in what i can improve my game so it's really good that chihayafuru showed us like a, a lot of things like related to to the game that we could think and improve our own games so I, I don't know. I really don't have <laughs> like something to say. Oh, this is not faithful. So 
if you started playing karuta and you're watching chihaya furu and you know more or less what to do like you learn a lot with with the anime it's just it's just hard if you don't have anyone to play with but but the anime by itself it, it's really helpful for for beginner players and that's why the anime helped a lot of people to start karuta okay and now from your experience um in your karuta club from brazil how do they approach beginners like they come from zero um well i guess it's good to say how how beginners are approached in japan first so okay. we, mm -hmm. we can tell we can see some of the differences um in japan most of the times you have to know like memorize all the poems or at least 50 like half of the poems so you can play like a, a full match and if you haven't you go to the meetings and you're only allowed to watch the matches you're not allowed to play mm, but okay. and i think oh of course they can do that because they have a lot of people to play yeah. and you don't want to waste anyone's time i mean if you're a real beginner and you don't even know half of the cards mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to play if you don't have like some some tips and some things to help you during the game so they can do it like that and besides um they already learned the poems in school so a lot of people mm -hmm. are, oh i kind of remember that so it's easier to memorize for mm -hmm. us um since the beginning we had a lot of, we had a lot of um, difficulties with beginners because um we we were thinking what can we do so mm -hmm. people see what karuta is and how can they keep playing if they want to of course because it's a lot of information um who who try to begin playing karuta have already realized and if you have you if you have no knowledge of japanese because you don't really have to know japanese to play karuta you only have to know hiragana but if you don't know hiragana as well um it's just a lot it's a lot of things to memorize it's a lot of rules and you have to find people to play with because mm -hmm. i mean in our case we didn't really have people who knew how to play so we were playing each other and we didn't know if we were doing it right and so one one thing we we did to keep the beginners was to think oh we want them to play since the first moment they come here so one of the things we always do is like you won't be watching you won't be studying the poems the cards while you're with us like uh, you have a lot of time to do that and we don't have a lot of opportunities to play together because i mean at the time we were the only and even today we are one of the only clubs in brazil who plays karata mm. so when we're together we want to play and we won't be studying we it, it it's so hard for us we, we don't have a lot of opportunities to play and to say to someone oh you won't play because you only know 49 cards and you have to know 50 cards to play so you'll be watching us for three hours while we're playing so we play the smaller games the smaller matches mm -hmm. so people who are beginning they can play as well um we play other versions of karata like iroha karata and that's i know that we don't we don't use hyakuni isu <laughs> for iroha karata we don't use okay. the poems in the competitive karata for this but it's like for when you're learning hiragana it's it's easier to memorize if you play some iroha cards and we used to use it to um to warm up before playing actual matches so we use it as well we play chirashi karuta that's the version of karuta that they play in the new year like you take all the hyakuni ishi poems and you you oh. you put them like on a table or on the ground and you sit in a circle and and then someone reads the poem and you have to take it but there's not like field 
there's no we don't really use like otetsuki and mm -hmm. it's just like having fun and for some for people who are learning how to play it's it, it's good because even though we play seriously they can play with us because it's just for fun it's not possible to start if you don't have prior knowledge it's not possible to start playing like full matches sometimes we got to like my first full match i was like three months in playing karuta and i hadn't played a full match like and after three months i finally got to play a full match after i had memorized the poems and then we help people memorize the poems we give them we give we give them tips we have like a blog where we post things about karuta and we can send them oh when you're alone when you can't play karuta you can study it because when we're together we won't be doing it because i mean it's something you can do alone we won't be it yeah mm -hmm. of course i already said that so yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's like that our approach is like even if you know nothing about karuta you'll be playing since the beginning so if you like it if you want to make the commitment because you know it's a lot of thing to really start playing karuta we have this like philosophy as well that you're only playing karuta when you memorize the 100 poems uh, before you memorize the 100 poems you're learning how to play so that there's no way to say oh uh, your objective should be to learn the 100 poems and play with the real cards, the official cards, if you want to keep playing Karuta, of course. But we can start there because of all, all, all the things I already said. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the two things that I guess is the most important in the, in the ways we approach beginners. It's like uh, we always tell them, oh, your objective sh should be to get to the hundred poems and play with the real cards, and you always be playing when you're with us. You'll be studying when you're by yourself. Like you learn what works better for you mm -hmm. when you're studying. Okay. And a question: um, Do you know the whole poems for all one hundred, or only the Kimaridis? Oh, um, we. Uh, e I, I, oh, well, for the listeners, you don't really have <laughs> yeah. to know the whole poem mm -hmm. to play Karuta. You have to know, like, specific parts of it to to recognize them. It's like, I I, I like the, the, the analogy they use in Chihayafuru that they do with Shinobu because they see all mm -hmm. the cards as friends. And as I like to see, they she she sees the cards as people, like a hundred people. So you have to think like that. The first time you see, if you see a hundred people, like oh, you be introduced to a hundred people today. How can you recognize all of their faces? Like it's so hard, <laughs> right? <laughs> like a hundred people is too much. So a hundred cards is too much. So. You have to learn how to recognize them. So the cards are like the face of the poem. So you don't have to know all the poem. You have to know how to recognize them. Like they're friends. So you should be able to look at them and say, oh, this is Chiha, the Chihaya's, Chihaya's card. This is Chiha, mm -hmm. or this is Seo Hayami. You have to be able to do that, but you don't really have to know all the poem. Of course, with time, if you know all the poem, it gets easier to play because karuta, uh, kar in karuta you use a lot of your ears to recognize sounds. So you have to adapt yourself on how the reciter um, reads some poems. So if you know all the poems, it gets easier to identify what's being read or and, and what's not because I mean, different reciters recite it differently. So you don't have to know all the poems. I mean, I, me, myself, my experience, I didn't know all the poems. I just learned them like the Kimariji and how to identify the cards. And I spent like two and a half years like that. And when I went to Japan, I thought, oh, I may need 
to to know all the poems there because I don't know what's expecting us. So <laughs> I was like, um, maybe maybe I'll need it in in some match or in anything. I I, I didn't know <laughs> what I was thinking, but I thought, oh, it's better if I learn all the poems. So I memorized all of them. I don't really know if I remember everything because it's been more than a year that I haven't played like real matches and if you don't use it of course that your brain like erases everything but I should know all the poems <laughs> and but at the beginning when we start teaching people we just say oh stay with the like with the small you can like if you can recognize with only one kana like with one letter from the Japanese alphabet mm -hmm. in the card, if you can recognize it with only one symbol, do it. You don't have to know everything. Just do it the, the easiest way you can. Because after you you learn how to identify all of them, you can think, oh, now I'll learn everything. I'll learn the background. I'll learn the context. I'll learn um, who, who this author was the poem about. Then you can focus on those other things okay and for the ones who want to understand you better do you have a daily routine for practicing karate exercises like i'm sorry you have like a daily routine for practicing karate or you just play when you feel it yeah. you never practice oh <laughs> yeah for me <laughs> yeah it's hard because I'm one of the strongest players like in my club mm -hmm. and a lot of new members or oldest members who are like not the strong player out there um, it's not fun karata is not fun if you if the skill gap is 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 big mm -hmm. so you only have fun if you know there's a match there because like you can see if the other person starts to oh i'm giving up because you 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 win already so i'm not I, i'm i'm not giving any trouble like you can win and then it's not fun if you do it like that so for me i at the beginning i practiced a lot like memory exercises like to say all of the kimariji of the poems like in my head keep saying it when i was in the bus when i was taking a shower or when I was doing nothing, I would just think about the poems. I would practice like um, um, in, like um, air karata, just like they do in the Chihaya Furu movie, that they're like in the middle of the street and then you see Chihaya, Chihaya like sweeping her hand like in front of the people. And okay. that, that's one thing like that I like to do as well. And then like imagine that I'm playing and that is like shadowing, right? Like you have like, you imagine you're playing karata and you imagine the poem is being recited and you're taking cards and things like that. But I don't really practice like playing matches, like putting the cards there and then taking them. Because I think for, for my objectives, it should be like a group effort. So if there's not other people doing it in my club, then it doesn't make sense if I'm practicing by myself because when when we go play together, I would just win against them and it won't be fun because it's not fun for the person who, who's winning and it's not fun for the one who's losing as well. So I try to meet up um, as, as often as we can. So sometimes we play, like to, we practice together, not matches but oh i want to learn how to take cards better at this position so we practice we do some of that but like a daily routine for me is hard because karate is a hobby you know mm -hmm. and i've tried practicing like oh i'll just practice some cards like every day and then it sort of became like an an obligation like oh i have to do that and i was thinking oh my god i have to do the car today i didn't do it as well and like i don't have a lot of space here so it, it, it's really troubling to <laughs> to prepare everything and then 
everyone who's played Karatsuka in, in, in their homes have already experienced the thing that, oh, you're so focused on playing, on practicing, and then you sweep a card, like, in, in the, like, in a really hard place to get, and then you're like, it breaks your focus. You're like, oh my god, I lost a card. And then you spend like one hour trying to take back the card. And it's like, it ended your, your practice. You can't practice anymore. So <laughs> I don't really do it. But it's, it's great. Sometimes um, I think it's great to get used to the poems to do Fudanagashi. That is like using the cards as flash cards. You have to say them as fast as possible as you're seeing them but these days i don't do it because it's for me it's kind of sad because we can play in person and when we're playing together because i like i i think it's funnier to play with everyone and to practice together i when we're together i don't see the time passing and when i'm by myself it's kind of suffering so <laughs> but i do think it's useful if i was like mm, if i was playing in tournaments like in japan to get to weight class or to try to become meijin i don't know if you're playing like that commit that committed to playing I think it's useful if you practice your movements every day so you don't get stiff and, and and these things like you have to play often so your body remembers what to do and you get used to like because your knees hurt a lot your hips kind of starts to hurt when you're when you're when you're playing more mm -hmm. than three or four matches yeah. so it's really useful to like always stretch up and do this kind of things. But since I'm in Brazil and I know there won't be any tournament soon and I don't have the, it, there's anything to encourage me to do it. So <laughs> that's why I don't do it. Okay. And, and just like a disclaimer from what you said, I mean, the person who loses, um, she may be having fun because, well, I don't know about others, but in my case, I, I never had that mentality of uh, you're winning anyway, so I just won't do any effort. I, I never had that because um, when I'm in the character group, you know, you as well, from Ada Chan, from, from Ada Mahar. <laughs> yeah. Um, I always really, it's really fun for me to play against Betsy, to play against you, <laughs> because <laughs> you're way too strong, but I still want to play against you to see if, like, uh, from Betsy, for example, I sometimes only take one card or two cards. I think maximum I only had three, three. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's still fun and for me it's like okay um do a, pla uh, a match with betsy or rafa let's see if now i take four at least <laughs> right so it, it's kind of a progress there because uh when i play against the the app and i play against heart i always play against heart with the CPU. I, I don't do ranking. I'm so afraid of doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> but I do the CPU and like sometimes I I well I lose, sometimes I win. Um but it, it's way too different because sometimes I win and I say, oh I'm getting better and then I play a game <laughs> with the CPU <laughs> card and then I lose terribly. <laughs> It's it's really tricky there, but with Betsy, I always lose, and that's that's a constant <laughs> thing. <laughs> so it it, it feels it feels more real. Like I want to see yeah. when I'm playing with others, and then oh, I'm winning. Uh, for example, in the last match against them, uh, I win, and then I lose, then I lose, then I win, and then Betsy, and I kind of see. And I, I try to notice if I'm improving or if I'm getting worse or if my memory is lacking or anything. So for me, it's fun. And it's like I'm playing with the CPU and then here I, I'm doing a challenge for myself and a huge challenge because, yeah, the gap is really, really wide there. But yeah, j just for a point there that maybe the person you're playing with is actually having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean... That's how we see um, the passion of people who are playing karate. I mean, 
your situation is so specific because I guess you don't, don't have people to play. Even if you had people yeah. to play, like yeah. right now, you can go out there and play people in person. Mm -hmm. But it's like you see how much passion people have for Karuta when even they know they'll lose, mm -hmm. they want to keep playing because they want to keep improving. But mm -hmm. that's just one thing I can expect from beginners because I know that when I was a beginner, I was like, oh, I want to have fun and I like playing, but I don't really know if I want to take it seriously. So when I was playing with, with if I was playing with someone that was like so strong that I didn't have any chance, it was kind of frustrating because I knew that I had a lot of things to improve. But it takes time to get there. Yeah. And if you if you crush like a beginner like that, so oh you're just beginning, and then I won't let you take cards for like <laughs> a lot of time in a row. Like you're only playing strong really strong people and you can see that you're improving because um I, I, I guess in, in, in the app I, I'm not one I'm not wanting to say that your experience is not valid. I'm, just, I'm saying that it, it is real, like people who I've seen that love Karata since the beginning, they're just like that. They don't want to play like with, they they want to play everyone. They want to play people that's stronger, that's weaker, that there's a challenge. They want to play the more, the better. <laughs> But <laughs> if you want to make a community out of that, You can do that with everyone, just like Arata did with Haya in the beginning of the anime, right? That mm -hmm. she, he, he, ta he took every card and Chihaya took only one. So for a first experience, it's okay. But imagine if the next time Chihaya didn't get to take cards and that it kept happening for like a month <laughs> before she could like start playing. So mm -hmm. it really gets to, to the other player's head and it's not fun. And when you get used to playing to someone, you sometimes notice the gimmicks of their playing. Like you already know what will happen if you send that card or if you keep that card. And then it, it can get a little predictable, the, the situation. So it's good to have like, I, I think the ideal is for you to have a rival, like someone who's, closer in skill with you but mm -hmm. it's not he's uh this person could be a little stronger or a little weaker but you're always like competing with each other because you have like an objective in the shard like in you have like oh okay so my objective next week is try to win against this person and not like oh i want to take two cards from <laughs> from this person because in the real game like 50 cards um if you take like two cards it's like it's it's too little it's almost anything and you're almost not not playing and it hurts like your body hurts just like if you were playing like if you were taking cards <laughs> yes yeah. your knees hurts your <laughs> everything hurts right <laughs> when you're playing so I think it, it is important to get people that is really passionate and want to play everyone. But also it's good to keep people who don't really know yet if they want to take it seriously or even people who just only want to have fun playing Karuta. It's like, it's good to not crush them every time. <laughs> and I mean, I, I we, we have people like that in, in our club that They, they like playing Karuta, but, but they're not like, oh, I don't want to win against everyone. I just think it's fun to take cards and to swing my arms and to laugh with everyone. So that's what they're playing for, not to win. So they don't mind if they're improving, if they can do the specific movements like Modorite. And, and that's okay as well. I guess mm -hmm. the club should be for everyone. I guess that's the hard part when we're talking about building a community because you can't just say, oh, um, we just only people who loves Karata and wants to, to play their best, 
because in the real life it won't happen if you get like three people one of them will think different from you and then yeah. it starts to get hard <laughs> so there's a a lot of is that there's a diverse kind of people who loves karata in really different ways so we try to accommodate every like to to please everyone and, and it's hard so and that's why you have to pay attention to everyone and everything but i agree with you that when the person is eager to play with everyone they should like if you have fun doing it do it play it more like, karate is fun yeah well and rivals are actually important for every skill every sport so yeah <laughs> yeah but i don't think i mean the people who have fun also want to win of course but yeah i just think it's a bit of being realistic also because we if i go with the mindset okay i practice i improve so much i want to win against betsy i'm going to get out of there so frustrated <laughs> <laughs> yeah <Right? laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I want to win, but I also want to be realistic of I want to see an improvement, right? So that's why oh, yeah. another card, but maybe a final goal is to win someday <laughs> against her. Yeah. But yeah, it is. <laughs> so um, let's say, do you have any tips for placements of the cards? Mm, Because I'd say point, in the you know? beginning, mm -hmm you should use like and in, in the at the beginning you should test a lot you should like try a lot of different things because um you know the common order is to do like you start playing and then you memorize you you ho you know how to identify the, identify the cards then your next focus would be like to have a placement so that you can play like better you ha don't have to memorize 50 cards every time you you're playing so i i my my advice it would be like use a standard p placement mm -hmm. or if you can play like a lot that is not the reality for most of the foreign players but in japan mm -hmm. it, it is possible so they can try a lot of new different things so if you're a beginner um and you don't want to use a standard placement j just from like day one standard placement you can like try a lot of things maybe this card you take it better in your third row than your second row you don't really know so like you have to try it so that's what i done in the beginning i tried a lot so every game i would be like some cards oh i like this card here so i'll leave it here But other cards, I was just like, mm, today I want to put it here. I want to see if it works here. And but I would advise people. So in the beginning, they like keep the the lookalike cards together. And mm -hmm. as you get used to them, you try to to split them. Just like if you were talking about Shino Buredo and Shiratsuni, Shino and Shira. Mm -hmm. um, You keep them together, like, oh, okay, I'll keep them together for some games. And then when you feel like it, oh, this game, I want to try something new with these cards. You may try to separate them if you want to, I don't know, and and see if it works for you. Like, and and it, it, if it does, oh, it's okay. You find a new a new thing to to do. And if it doesn't work, and you prefer to keep it together, you you just keep it. It's just, It's just that you have to know that, I mean, regarding where to put the cards, um, there are two common things, like you, you put them together or split them. Like the the other reasonings, the, the, the reasoning behind the other, mm -hmm. the other, the other placement, like it, it would be if you think about rhythm. So, oh to a one syllable card it is um if i put closer to me it's faster for me to get and i have to take it at the first sound so i'll keep it in my right like my bottom row so it makes sense like rhythm wise and it doesn't really make sense if you put them like in the third row 
rhythm wise because we want to be the fastest possible in that car so in the beginning you should consider you, you won't consider a lot of rhythm wise <laughs> like when you won't consider that a lot in the beginning because you're not used to the cards yet but playing with a lot of cards and to mm -hmm. recognize them and to change place places because you you may change places you can't change cards from from their places when you're playing so my advice would be think only about splitting or keeping it together so if we're talking about um like double cards like the the pairs um keep them together and then try things out like splitting them up or or changing the the pairs from place like oh I'm used to put Shira and Shino and my left, so I'll try to put it on my right in the other in the other mm, in the other match to mm -hmm. see how it go how it goes. Um, but I guess is that is a lot of try and try and error e e experience. Like if mm -hmm. you 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 go and you 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 keep doing it and and see what works for you like if you can play a lot that would be the that would be the ideal <laughs> the, the ideal environment for you to improve your placement like to play a lot and try a lot of new things but if you can do like that like in my country and probably in your country as well mm -hmm. and if you're a foreign player from everywhere outside japan it's it's the it's the way it is as well um I would advise for you to choose a certain placement or to make your own placement like with with what you already have like oh I there are 20 cards that I already know where to put them where I like to put them so make it like take notes from it and the other cards try to make it like as fast as possible so you have uh, a placement like with balance from sides because if you have a lot more cards in your left than in your right in a lot of games you you see that your field will be like a mess because there's a lot of cards in one side and less in the other so make a standard placement as soon as you can and memorize it and and keep using it and try to improve it while you're playing because you won't really you won't have a lot of opportunities to play so when you're playing you want to to improve what you have or maybe not if you're in a tournament but i don't know <laughs> i mean i've been in tournaments too in tournaments outside my country like two times and i didn't mm -hmm. want to to try new things but i had to because i knew the skill gap like wasn't in my favor if i just played the way i wanted to play i had no chance to win so i had to take risks so every time we'll be trying new things unless yeah. you practice a lot already every time you'll be trying new things so make a standard placement and then and then keep trying things if you see that every time i after i play my games um i I take note from every car like where it was and if I could take it like all, all, all of the cards mine and the opponents but the ones that my cards I tend to see oh this card every time I put it here and I never take it so there's something wrong with that if yeah. if it happens one time it's okay because you know sometimes you're not focusing on that card and everything but if you play like 10 games and in half of them you had the card and you didn't take it you should change it, the place of this card right if you like you if you didn't really notice because um it, it, it is hard to to think about it like app with the app because with the app you can see your opponent so you don't really know if your opponent was focusing the card or not but when you're playing like in in real you're seeing your opponent so you can see if your opponent was like oh i want to take that card and focus in on it or if they're they were not so mm, 
you you can use it that to your analysis as well just like oh i lost my favorite card but my opponent wanted really wanted to take it so it, it, it is okay because i mean they sacrificed the effort on other cards to keep the focus on that card so it is it is okay like at the end of the game you just have to clean your field like take if you don't make any any, any faults you have to take like 25 cards you don't have to take all of them you just have to take 25 so it is okay if you lose some of them sometimes so you have to anal to make some analysis mm -hmm. so that you know oh it is it, it's it, is it working the way i planned or is it not and 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 that would be that that's the ideal for someone who don't get to play a lot, a lot I'd say because um, it it makes it, it makes you more uh, you have more autonomy over the way you're playing because you're testing you're trying your things and not like it helps a lot to see how other players do it and watching other players playing mm -hmm. and seeing what they do with the cards but sometimes your body can can keep with it like oh okay for that player it is good to put the card there because he had it because they have uh, long arms or because they can reach easier to that place but i can't so sometimes it doesn't work like the, the best would be if you can do it for yourself mm -hmm. okay <laughs> great so to keep with that, um, what's your thought process while playing? Let's say the match starts started, okay? Uh, what do you do? Do you start watching the placement for the opponent from left to right, from Kimaridis, from your... How, how do you do it? What's your thought process in the start and during the match? Well, um, in the 15 minutes, Mm -hmm. I I'm thinking about the 15 minutes when you place the yeah. cards. Mm -hmm. um, when when I place the cards, while I, I'm placing my cards, I'm already memorizing them. Mm -hmm. So it's like I know where where they'll be because <laughs> I have a, a standard placement <laughs> for me mm -hmm. for myself. Yeah. So I memorize while I'm putting them in their places, and then I decide if I have something like oh. Um, the balance is not good. I have, for example, I have more cards on my left than I have in my right. So mm -hmm. I see if I can change some card, and mm -hmm. I already keep, keep I keep a note of that in my head. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I changed this. So some so if I want to take it back when it gets better, like balance wise, my field, I I have to change it back. Or if I really want to memorize it here to to mm -hmm. to make it different and keep all the game like that so i do it like think things like that and position all of the cards and then when it starts memorizing i go through every card my opponent have um and i see what cards they are not memorizing just seeing just so i know which cards are in game and which cards are are not in the game so if i have like a lot of not cards I I I'll, I'll go to my opponent's side and 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 pay attention to oh do they have not cards because if they don't have any and I have like five of them it, it'll be trouble like you have a lot of cards with the same syllable and your opponent has no one your your field will be like focused when when this syllable is re is is being recited so mm -hmm. you have to take care you have to be careful about that so while uh, i i go through every card i try to pay attention to that and to one syllable unique syllable cards like if they have musume fusa jose i try to look at it and see oh i have to pay attention because you you only have one chance one chance right like we are cards sometimes you you have like Amano with you, with you and Amatsu is outside and then Amatsu is red and you're like oh my god I didn't remember uh, the, the card that was with me but you have another chance because the card wasn't red but on the other side if Su, Sumino and 
Sumi no Eno is, is recited, you have no chance to, to take it again if you don't take it in the first time. So I try to pay attention to the, to the unique syllable cards as well. Then after I see, like, I know what 50 cards are in the game, I go through my opponent's field once again, and then mm -hmm. this time I try to make it with like the the card groups. So if I see if I see a a na card, the same example again, I see for example a natsu. Oh, my opponent has natsu there. Where are the other nas in the game? So without without looking at the card. I try to remember, oh, I have Nagaka here, and I have Nageke here, mm -hmm. and they have Naniwaga there. So I know where all of the cards with the same syllable, where they are. And then I do it for every one of them. Um, at the beginning, I, I try to separate them with the phonetics. So, for example, Musume and Fusahose, they're not together. <laughs> Even though I pay, I try to pay attention to all of the seven, like because they're unique. Mm -hmm. I put su, se, and sa together. It's one group, yeah. and but mu and me is another group that like they're not together with su, sin, and se because the, the sounds are different. Mm -hmm. So I try to to separate it uh, like sound wise, and. I do it for every card, like looking at my opponent's field and then in the end at my field. So mo most of the times I do it in my in my field as well. So I know like if there if there are some loan cards, for example, ta card, there there are six ta cards in the game, but sometimes there's only one in in the field. Like you have Tago no Urami. So you have to go with you so um, you want to pay attention to that because as soon as you or your opponent hear ta that's the only place you can focus because mm -hmm. there's only one card that begins with ta so loan cards are something as well that you have to pay some attention so it would be like that i i do it and Okay, when I when I finished my my side and your, your opponent's side, I, if I have any time, I try to stand up like and try to stretch a little, mm -hmm. and I try to I pass the order in my head and without looking at, at the field, mm -hmm. like of all the cards, cards that are in game and outside game. So I go, Musume Fusa Hose, Ukaura, Tsukitsuku, Shirashino, and then to every one yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are in game, I try to remember, or, oh, oh, where are these cards? So, Musume Fusa Hose, oh, I have Mu and I have Ho. Where are they? Like my opponent has said, where are these cards? So I try to pass it like in, in my head. And. Oh, okay, like if if I have time to do it, everything. And then most of the times in the first game, you do all of those things like in less than 10 minutes. And then at the third and fourth game, you like 15 minutes won't be enough. <laughs> it, it's really hard. Like the more you play, mm -hmm. it gets m more tiring and it's a bigger effort to keep doing it every game so it's a lot of practice as well like people who play a lot uh, they have a lot of advantages advantages mm -hmm. because they're used it to do it so it doesn't really matter if they're playing the first match or the fourth match like they can they can go through the placement like really fast so i can do it i i can't do it yet because I haven't practiced all, all of it yet. So, and then one thing that I forget to say, um, while I was doing all of that, like looking at the cards and seeing what I have and what my opponent have, um, I tried to think of some cards to send already. Mm -hmm. like, 
the ideal it would be for you to have like a priority list when the, when you're memorizing you should have like a priority list already with like a lot of cards to send in in a lot of situations but it's not like real like you don't have time to think about a lot of those things so i try to do it like three cards oh why three cards like i i try to think about three cards to send to my opponent why because sometimes you're saying oh i think I'll, I, I, you you decide oh i will think about one card to send to my opponent and then when i send it i'll think of other like i i'll have time to do it but sometimes in like at the first card your opponent makes a double otetsuki like you take a card from your opponent's side and then your opponent's make an otetsuki on your side and then you have to send two cards in, in a row like in the, at the same time and if you didn't thought about sending cards already you're like, oh, I have one, but what about the other one? And you may end up sending a wrong card mm -hmm. or a card that you were intending to keep with you, or maybe it can mess up your 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 memory. Like you weren't thinking of sending that card and then you sent it. And then when the card is red, you go in your, in your field rather than your opponent's. So mm -hmm. I always try to keep in the beginning of the game, like, with two or three cards that is the priority to send. I mean, the priority may change because um, I won't go to all the priority of cards to send here, but I try to split some cards. If I have a lot of pairs, I try, I try to split some of them. Um, mainly the longest ones, like the Oyama Fuda, the longest, the longer cards, like Kimigatame and Watanohara these cards are better if they're separated so i try to split them if i have some of them and i maybe sometimes i try to send loan cards like if i only have tago from the top cards in all the game i try to send it to put some pressure on my opponent or if if i'm confident about a card um i try to send it to my opponent like i really like this card and I want to take it from my op from the opponent's side. I mean, I want to take it and put pressure on them, like saying, oh, I, I took that and I took more of them. So you better keep protecting your field and like not focusing my side um, because that's the style that, that I like to play. So <laughs> I like to say cards to to keep being aggressive in the game, like to keep taking cards from my opponent and keep protecting my cards. So when the game, like two minutes before the game starts, you may practice your movements. And once again, I try to practice the, the, the cards that are weird in the field. Like sometimes people put it like uh, one, a unique syllable in the third row. So that for me mm -hmm. is, is weird mm -hmm. because it's, it's not really like it, it's far and if i if i don't go like ex to exactly in the card i may make a mistake because you go so fast and then you have your own cards in the in the middle so i try to to like practice those weird movements like the the movements that are harder for me to that i know is harder for me to do during the game and then when the game starts um at the beginning like at the first 10 cards um in in the game i try to see um what my opponent are focusing what they're doing and i try not to play at my fastest pace i mean sometimes i do play at my fastest in the beginning because um my my biggest skill is my memorization so at the beginning of the game when there's a lot of cards i have a lot of advantage because most of the players that at least the players i've played um they can focus on a lot of cards at the same time mm -hmm. and i can focus like half of the cards in like 25 out of the 50 I can take it really fast if they're red in the beginning. So there, there's a, that's a lot, right? It is. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and then 
I, tr I try to see what my opponent are trying to do, if they're trying to be aggressive or defensive. And I try to attack, like take my opponent's cards so I can send those cards I plan. Remember, like I, I decided I would send three or two cards. So I have to take cards from my opponent to send them. So I try to take those cards and send some of mine. Um, and always keep looking at my opponent's cards. And I guess in, in the beginning, it would be dead. And, you know, try not to make mistakes and try to make an advantage. So, so in the middle of the game, I can make like put more pressure on my opponent and make my opponent makes mistakes so I can win like fast. Because as I said, <laughs> my, my advantages are are in the beginning of the game because that's where i can use most of my skills to take more cards and to make make advantages a at the end it's really more about speed and what you're focusing and not making otetsuki mm -hmm. if like in the end uh, otetsuki and, and otetsuki at the end is much more in it has much more impact than if you make an otetsuki at the first card because and the first card is like, oh, okay, now is 26 to 24. But if you're like five, and if you're in a in a draw of five cards, if you're same like I have four five cards and you have five cards, then if I make an Otetsuki, it's like six cards and then four cards to you. It's like it, it it's so close to to winning the game if you make an Otetsuki at the end. So I try to start the game slow paying attention to my opponent to predict their movements mm -hmm. and to build an advantage and then finish the game like before we get to the last cards because the last cards is it, it's harder for me to play and i guess it's that okay and what are your weaknesses? Because this is a question for the audience of you're way too strong. <laughs> so how can someone beat you? Well, um, <laughs> if you're talking like about the app, uh, mm -hmm. I guess my biggest weakness is the consistency. Like how can I play at the same level every time? Um, I guess that's what separates like good players from not good players like if you mm -hmm. say oh you're an a class player or you're a b class player um what separates the an a class player than a, a c class player a d class player sometimes is not that they're like um a lot faster than you is their consistency is like they can take uh, the same amount of cards every game so for me it, it is hard because in some games in some situations i can crush uh, an, op an opponent like by 10 cards 12 cards and mm -hmm. the same opponent depending on the situation depending on the card depending on the order the cards are red uh, it's like it's almost a draw or i lose so in 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 the app you have to consider more of luck because as i was saying in a 20 in a 50 card game at the beginning an otetsuki it's it it's almost it, it's okay like you shouldn't be doing otetsuki anytime mm -hmm. but if you do it at the beginning it's okay but in the app it's already few cards mm -hmm. like it's already eight cards if you're playing standard so if you make an otetsuki it's like nine to seven and then it's a lot of pressure already. So there's a lot of luck involved. <laughs> and my weaknesses is like, if I get to the end of the game and and, and those kind of, of, of plays, like um, it, it really depends on the card. If I have cards that I really like, I know I'm confident I can take them with, uh, against most of the people so it's okay but if there are only cards i'm not really good at it's harder to focus and it's harder to focus more cards so mm. if there's like four cards in the game and 
I don't really, I'm not really good at any of them. I'll have to choose one or two to focus so that I can take them for sure. And, and, and that, that's what's hard. Like in a, now talking about a 50 game, a, a 50 card game, um, it would be like my weakness. It mm -hmm. will be like the, the end of the game because I'm, I'm, I'm strong at the beginning and I'm really fast, but as the game keeps going, uh, most of the people um, get faster and faster. And I am faster. I, I am fast, but in the end, I'm just as fast as in the beginning. So I don't really have an advantage as long as the game keeps going on. Uh, wh one thing that I've seen happen sometime sometimes is that um, some people give up not not really give up because it is not polite <laughs> to give up in the game okay. mm -hmm. but they they're like they're already thinking they lost when the game is not lost yet so because i i i built i built an advantage like big a uh, big advantage so I got to my opponent's mind and and like they they think they can they can win anymore. And karate is an unpredictable game. Like in even in a 50 card game, you may be losing by 10 cards and still win. So if you don't give up, you can still win. That that's the the thing that's most amazing. So and of course, it's not only it's a strategy, it's luck, it's skills, but I pref I like to keep it like so I can win before it gets to to those more stressful, <laughs> nervous moments. So so that my my weakness it will be like the, the end of the game, and I guess that's because I don't get. A lot of opportunities to to play games to to the end like really playing because i've i've i got used it to to build a large advantage so even when i i win by when i'm i'm not winning by a lot of cards uh, i'm used it to play winning so for me, it's harder to to play losing, and and when the game gets to the end, I guess that's that's my, my weaknesses, I guess. And mm -hmm. well, also if my opponent is faster than me, I'm not used to playing people faster than me because, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's not a lot of people to play here, and. There are people who are faster than me and some cards but if you're playing someone who's faster than you in general like in all of the cards so every card you go your opponent takes just by a second earlier and you kind of start to get frustrated because you were so close to get the card and not only one card a lot of cards and to lose like that and it, it's frustrating as well so for me to play people faster than me it's hard and when when i start becoming worried i make more otetsuki more falls and well it, it it gets it gets really hard i mean i remember in in otsu um before the tournament um, we had these days with practice matches and we get to play like real uh, we get we got to play um karate players who had more experience than we had and then we played in the tournament because you know in the tournament uh, most of the people were foreign karate players so for, for so for us like the days before it was much harder and I had the opportunity to play a former queen, um, uh, Imamura-san, and it was like they they even recorded it like in in for the television, 
and it was so hard because at the beginning I I was so nervous because I knew that she would be faster, that she would her her movement would be better than mine, even though like she's been a queen a long time ago. Uh, I know I I didn't have a lot of of experience playing karata, and experience plays a big card in during the game. So a lot of things I planned went wrong during the game. <laughs> But, and I made some Otetsuki, and even today I remember some of the cards from that game because, I mean, I, I, I was so worried and, and so anxious to take some cards, and she was faster than me, and th that's what I'm talking about. And in the end, I lost by less than 10 cards. I mean, I didn't give up because I knew that she would be my biggest opponent. In Japan, like the the strongest person I would face in Japan would be her in that match, and then I decided, oh, I'll give it my all here, because if I can give my all, in it, it, it's okay. It was a practice match, and the tournament was in the day after, but I was like, if I can give my all here playing with her, what's the meaning of coming here like from the other side of the world? <laughs> and then even even though I gave my my best and like go through through my limits uh i lost but it was a nice match and i learned a lot so i guess those would be uh, just to <laughs> summarize my weakness is playing a 50 card game like my weakness is playing in the app would be luck and like if i made a mistake and luck consistency and like if i made a mistake while playing in the app it's it has much more impact because you have less cards and while playing with 50 cards it would be like i'm better at the beginning than at the end so i don't really like playing the the end of the game because it gets like i get a lot of i get a lot more anxious and then i make more mistakes and then i may lose the game <laughs> so like the end of the game and playing like if I'm not winning at the beginning and if my opponent is faster than me, I'm not used to that. Mm -hmm. So it's an, it's a, uh, one of my weaknesses. So because I, I don't really, I'm not used to play like that. So that's what I would say like, are all my weaknesses I can think of right now. Okay. And since you may know, we are approaching the end. So my favorite question in this case is always, what's your favorite card? But for you, let's make a variation. <laughs> okay. And let's say, what's your favorite card? Yes, but what's your strongest cards and your weakest cards? Oh, okay. Um, my favorite card mm -hmm. is Tsuku Baneno, Tsuku. It's not, it's one of my favorite cards um, mm -hmm. today. It's like, uh, to, to this day, I still say Tsuku is my favorite card because mm -hmm. we have this tradition in my club that when you start playing Karuta, um, the first card you memorize and you keep mm -hmm. in your heart and you will be a friend with is, is the first card you take while playing. And the first card, card I took while playing was Tsuku Baneno, was Tsuku. And this card, like, it... I have a lot of good and bad memories with it because as you may know um the cards you're good can help you but they can like they can distract you during the game as well mm -hmm. so um th this is my favorite card and the cards i'm good at i'm really good at three syllable cards mm -hmm. um okay and those th those cards are like that's one of the reasons my I, I'm good at the beginning of the game because most of the cards in the beginning of the game usually are three syllable cards. But then when the game keeps going, um, the Kimariji changes and then like yeah. Amano beca becomes Ama and Akino becomes Aki and and on and on. 
So a lot of cards that are three syllable cards become two syllable cards when when the game passes. So that's one of the reasons I lose my advantages. So um, the cards I like the most, it would be the cards that are I'm pleased to hear. So Yamaga and Yamaga and mm -hmm. like Yamaga, mainly Yamaga, but Yamaza as well, because um, if I can hear one of the pairs well, you can hear the other one as well. It's just like a matter of differentiating them. So I'm really good at Yamaga, but I can hear Yamaza really well. Um, I'm really good at Nageki, but I can hear Nageki as well. Um, I really like and I'm really good at Araza, but I'm really good at Arashi as well. Mm. And I'm really good at Harusu. I'm not really good at Haruno because I of, often mix it up with Hanano. I don't really know why, but oh. <laughs> Hanano and Haruno, I, mm -hmm. in, in my head, it, it gets mixed up. And it, it's been some time since I made that mistake, but I know if I'm not focused, it may happen. Mm -hmm. So, but I really like Harusu and, and, and Hitomo. And they, those are all cards that when I hear them, um, my, my ears feel like it, it, I, I'm pleased to hear them. So it, it's for me, it's always like that. If I'm pleased to hear the card, I, I became good in that card because I want to hear it and I want to take it faster. So um, I'm, I'm good at um, Fukukarani because it's a unique card because it's, it's, there's like a breath the air that comes before the actual card and I, 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 I love it and of course my my club's card Meguri Aite is one of my favorite cards and I have a lot of good memories with this card as well so even if sometimes I can't take it because as a unique syllable card sometimes it just all of the cards that I, I mean Sometimes there's just no way you can take it. Even if it's your favorite card, even if it's you're good at them, you don't have a chance because of the situation, because of, on what you have to focus in the, at that time. So most of the times I can take them, but not every time. And that's one of the things I, I struggle a lot in the beginning because it's like, oh, it's my favorite card. I have to take it. And when I didn't, I became frustrated and then if you do it like that, you may end up making a Tetsuki or you may end up um, like focusing too much on the card and then losing other cards. And sometimes it may happen that your card just won't be read, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like in a 50 card game, sometimes one of the cards will be the last one and the last one won't be read. And it may be your favorite card. You have to acknowledge that and mm. play around that. Even if you have a lot of cards in the game that you like, sometimes you won't be able to take them or they won't be read when you want to. And so and that's things like important things. Mm. Um, and about the cards I'm not really good at and I don't like, I don't really want, I don't really like to say I don't like cards. Um, of course. I like some of them more than the others, but I guess, um, actually, I guess right now, I like most. Of, I like most of them. So it's not really a matter of liking or not liking. It's just that some of them I can hear well, mm -hmm. or some of them other people can hear it really well, like Chihaya Buru and Chihaya's, Ch Chihaya's card. Um, this card. Um, people can hear it so well like in my club and other foreign karate players can hear it so well because they like the card of course because of Chihaya Furu mm -hmm. and then since the beginning it's one card that I've given up taking most of the games because I was oh okay I know I won't take this card I, I don't have to keep keep going around it so when I'm playing someone who I know uh, we, it, it, it'll be good at taking this card. I try to use it as an, an as an strategy too. Like uh, I may want to distract my opponent with the card, 
or something like that, like making the opponent focus more on the card so I can take other cards. Like you, you may use the cards you don't you you can take or you don't hear that well, like like that. So you you can make strategies out of that. Mm, and I guess that that's the the card that I feel the most. But there are some specific cards that I can hear well because I haven't practiced enough with them. Like Arima, it's sometimes hard for me. Um, and curiously, some cards, uh, I, I'm not that good at them because of lookalike cards. Just like, uh, I really like Nagaka, Nagara, Nagike, Nagiki. Those four cards, I can hear them really well. And even when they're two syllable cards, I'm good at them. But because of that, I really like those four cards. Um, I get, uh, I, my skill in the other four na cards are so bad. Like in Nanishi, Naniwaga, Naniwai, and Natsu, if I'm not focusing those cards, my attention tends to be towards Nagaka, Nagike, Nagiki, and Nagara. And then if I have all of those cards in game, I have to take care. So I'm not ignoring the cards I'm, I like less than the others. And that's one of the reasons I'm not that good at, at Natsu, in Nanishi, because I'm really good at the other and I mm -hmm. tend to pay more attention to them. So it, it is hard to do it as well, because when there's a lot of cards you like, um, it's more comfortable to look for them and to wait for them to be read to take. But if your opponent, if your card is not read first, it's like, there's no way you're going to win, right? So, um, so it, it, it's like that for me. I mean, I really like long syllable cards, even though sometimes you can't really take them because, you know, modorite and everything. You have to choose one of them if they're separate. Mm -hmm. So I guess all the, the cards that I feel more confident I can take is three syllable cards, because if they're not alone, just like I said, uh, if the only na card in the game is Nageki and my opponent has it, if I'm not really focusing, it'll be hard to take it. But if they're not alone, I have a, uh, I have a high chance of taking three syllable cards I like. So that, that, that's why I guess I like it. I, I like the rhythm of taking it. Like the three syllable, I feel like is the perfect timing to take a card. Uh, less than that, it feels so fast. Uh, a lot faster than than is comfortable for me and longer than that it feels that it's too slow so it is like i get to the card and i'm waiting for for the reciter to read the rest of the card mm -hmm. so i guess is that the rule of cards i like and i like less okay Thank you so much, Rafael, for this interview. And of course, if you want to say any last words before closing, this is the time. Okay. Well, thank you, Stephanie, for inviting me. Thank you, Karata Peru. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone who's playing Karata around the world. Um, well, the message I want, I want to say is for everyone who likes Karata and who was playing Karata before the pandemic, to not give up and even people who started playing karate during the pandemic because right now most of the things most of the funny things we do with karate can be done because we can meet in person we can we can go to japan we can go to other countries to practice um i the message i want to give is that someday everything will get better and we'll be able to meet and play together once again I'm so excited to be in in other countries. I mean, I've been to France playing karate and it was so nice. I'm so excited to be in other countries that has karate players as well so we can play together. And I want to thank everyone for in, in this community for making it that that good. I mean, I I I have one saying that if if you're if you're a karate player, you already has a lot of friends in the world. Like you just have to find them because <laughs> sometimes it's hard mm -hmm. to find. But 
it's a really good community. So, so it's like that. And I want to, I want to contribute for this community to keep growing and continue the effort and continue and help the effort of Musumi Stone Sun with promoting and practicing karate around the world um, and organizing tournaments in, in Japan and outside Japan for international and local. I mean, I, I guess that's my, my biggest dream, karate related, to be able to hold tournaments all around the world and participate and everyone to play together and have fun together. And that's it. Thank you, everyone. Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, as you know, this video is going to be available on YouTube and on podcast. Okay. So check Spotify, check YouTube, give a like, subscribe. <laughs> okay. That's it. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.